friends. Welcome back to Teaching in Room 9, our region's largest classroom. My name is Julia and I'm one of the second grade teachers at the Soulard School, but here for Teaching in Room 9, all of my lessons focus on math for second graders. Welcome back, friends. It is so good to be here together with you. Thank you for taking time out of your day to be here with me. And I'm really excited for us to go ahead and get started. All right, so you know that I love starting our lessons with our Mindful Minute activity. So today, I thought, again, since we are learning all about shapes this week, that we could warm up our bodies, recenter our mind, our body, and our hearts, so that I know we'll be ready to learn here together by doing a little bit of shape yoga. All right, so I'm gonna ask my friends to take a few deep breaths here with me, and we're gonna do one shape pose today. Yesterday we did, I am a triangle in downward facing dog because it creates that triangle shape with our body. Then we also did, I am a rectangle. Uh, so that uh, we were able to do that in our plank pose. And today we are going to be focusing on, I am a square. So you are going to take a few deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in. Friends, now you are slowly going to move your body into tabletop position in order for you to take that square shape. Tabletop position, you are just on your hands and knees and your back is flat, just like a table. All right, hopefully you're working your way into that tabletop square position. You're going to, once you are in that position, so you're on your hands and knees, uh, your hands and your legs should be about shoulder width apart. And you're gonna hang out in that tabletop square pose for just a little bit. Take a deep breath in through your nose. And as you do that, let your belly hang down low. I always love this pose and it really helps stretch my back when I'm in that pose. Okay, so as you're breathing in, can dip down low and hang your belly down. Sometimes this is called cat and cow. The cow because the belly is hanging down low. And then as you exhale, you're going to arch your back like a cat. So belly hangs low. Belly arches or back arches like a cat. Hang out there for a minute, taking deep breaths in and out, and whenever you are ready, friends, you can slowly bring your body back up to a um, standing position, and you can relax and uh, get ready for us to do some learning here together. Nicely done, friends. You were awesome at making that square tabletop shape with your body, and I know that you are now focused, centered, and ready to learn here together. So we know that we've been focusing this week on this learning goal. I can understand shapes. We're working with 2D shapes and with 3D shapes as well. And we're trying to understand shapes and their attributes. Attributes just means that we are trying to figure out those different characteristics for each shape. So what makes a triangle a triangle? What makes a square a square? and understanding those differences between shapes so that we're able to um, recognize and pick out shapes and sort them whenever we see them. All right, so we're gonna focus and start on our, I'm bringing you this way so you can see this chart a little bit better, geometry vocabulary. So it says geometry vocabulary. Geometry is just the study of shapes. And uh, we are focusing on this one here since we are focusing on 2D shapes. So all 2D shapes have sides. Those are the straight lines. So you can see that this shape here has four sides. 
sides are line segments that make an outline for the shape. And then they are going to meet in the vertices. I say, you say vertices. Nicely done. I like some of the different vocabulary words um, that come along with geometry. So vertices are the pointy corners where the two sides meet. And then when those two sides meet at the vertice or the vertex, um, it is going to create an angle. So it's inside of a vertex and a right angle is 90 degrees. And then lastly, we also talked about parallel sides. These are two sides that are opposite each other. So these sides are parallel and these sides are parallel. They go up and down and they will not intersect or cross. Intersect just means to cross. All right, nicely done, friends. So in order for us to remember some of these different uh, vocabulary words and some of our 2D shapes, we're going to do a mirrors on activity. So again, just reminding all of my friends at home that when I say mirrors on, you are going to do everything, copy everything I say and do until I say mirrors off. Are you ready to try it with me? All right. Mirrors on. 2D shapes have sides. Those are the straight lines. They have vertices, the pointy corners. They also have angles formed when two sides meet. Two deep shapes will sometimes have parallel lines. These lines will never cross. Mirrors off. Nicely done, friends. You are doing such a great job with that. So we know that our 2D shapes have sides. These are the straight lines. Vertices, the pointy corners. Angles formed when two sides meet. And then they sometimes have parallel lines. Okay, and those parallel lines will never cross. Nicely done, friends. And then we talked yesterday all about all of these different 2D figures. So we're gonna sing our song again in order for us to practice. So again, the tune is Farmer in the Dell. Farmer in the Dell. Okay, and it starts with our circle and then we're gonna go to triangle and it goes all the way up to our octagon. And then we'll talk about those other ones as well. All right, are you ready? A, and I also encourage my friends before we go to try to create the shapes in the air by tracing with your fingers. See if you can make some of these shapes along with me as we sing. All right, now are you ready? <laughs> All right, a circle goes round and round. A circle goes round and round. No corners, no sides. A circle goes round and round. A triangle has three sides. A triangle has three sides. Up the mountain, down the back, and back again we slide. A rectangle has four sides. A rectangle has four sides. Two are long and two are short. A rectangle has four sides. A pentagon looks like a house. A pentagon looks like a house. It has five sides, they're all the same. A pentagon looks like a house. A hexagon has six sides. A hexagon has six sides. All its sides are the same. A hexagon has six sides. A heptagon has seven sides. A heptagon has seven sides. All its sides are the same. A heptagon has seven sides. Last one. An octagon looks like a stop sign. 
An octagon looks like a stop sign. It has eight sides, they're all the same. An octagon looks like a stop sign. Nicely done, friends. You are getting so good at singing along with me. So we started with our circle. A circle has one line and it just goes round and round. It does not have any sides or vertices. And then we came to our triangle. Our triangle has three sides, three vertices. They're all the same. Then we have a quadrilateral. I say you say quadrilateral. Nicely done. That's a big word, right? Quadrilateral just means it has four sides and four vertices. So this could be a rectangle like you see here, which has two long sides and two short sides or it could be a square as well, which has four sides and they're all the same. Then a pentagon looks like a house. A pentagon looks like a house. It has five sides, they're all the same. A pentagon looks like a house. So five sides and five vertices. A hexagon has six sides, six sides, six vertices and an easy way I remember hexagon is on um, six sides and I know that it looks just like this is because it starts with that ha ha hexagon that H uh, letter and sound and it's the same as a ha ha honeycomb right this is the same shape as a honeycomb that bees make and ha ha honeycomb ha ha hexagon so it's an easy way for me to remember then you have a heptagon. Heptagon is seven sides and seven vertices. Then an octagon is the same shape as a stop sign. And an easy way I remember this is eight sides and an octopus has eight legs. Octagon, octopus is another way to remember it. A nonagon has nine sides. Nonagon, nine. Then you have a decagon. A decagon has 10 sides. A hand decagon has 11 sides. And a doe decagon has 12 sides. And then at the bottom here it says, what is the relationship between sides, vertices, and angles? That the number of sides, vertices, the pointy corners, and angles that are formed inside those vertices, they're all equal. So as you notice, it keeps going up all the way to the dodecagon for 12 and triangle, three sides, three vertices, quadrilateral, four sides, four vertices, all the way up to um, this dodecagon, which is 12 sides and 12 vertices. And so all of them are going to be the same, the vertices, the sides, and the angles, and it will match that number. Nicely done, friends. You are rocking it with these shapes. So I thought that we could do a quick little shapes quiz. And I've also included some other shapes here as well. We've got oval, which is like a circle that is stretched out, and rhombus. And a rhombus is like a diamond. So I want to kind of just see what my friends know. All right, are you ready? So I'm gonna show you a shape and you're going to shout it out nice and loud. Okay, what shape is this? Yes, I heard a friend say a square. A square is a quadrilateral, four sides, four vertices. Next one, are you ready? What shape is this? Yes, I heard a friend say a rhombus. A rhombus is the same shape as a diamond. Next, this one we haven't talked about. Let's see if you know it. What shape is this? Yeah, I hear some friends saying it looks like a moon or a moon. It is a crescent. A crescent moon is this shape here. So crescent. I see you say crescent. Nicely done. All right, then what shape is this? If you yelled out triangle nice and loud, you're absolutely right. A triangle has three sides. Ready for the next one? What shape is this? 
Can you see it on my chart here? Yes, I heard a friend say hexagon, ha, ha, hexagon honeycomb. Okay, it has six sides, all the same. Are you ready for the next one? What shape is this? Nice, if you yelled out pentagon, you are absolutely right. A pentagon looks like a house. What shape is this? Yes, it is a circle. A circle goes round and round. It only has one line and it just goes in that continual circle. Next one. Yeah, it looks like a rhombus. You could also call this a parallelogram. What shape is this? We haven't talked about this one yet. Do you know what it is? Very impressive. I heard some friends yell out that this shape is a trapezoid. I say you say trapezoid. Nicely done. This is a trapezoid. You probably recognize these two because I'm sure you have used at some point at school um, those tangram shapes. And uh, you can see these trapezoids in there and you can use those tangram shapes to move together to make uh, different patterns and pictures. All right, only a couple more. What is this one? I heard some friends say stop sign. A stop sign is? An octagon, nicely done. Eight sides, eight legs on an octopus. Octagon, octopus. And then there is this one. What shape is this? Yeah, it doesn't matter if it's side to side or up and down. This is an oval, nicely done, oval. And the very last one, friends, are you ready? What shape is Nice, I can't get anything past you, friends. It is a rectangle. A rectangle is a quadrilateral. Quadrilateral, four sides, four vertices. Very nicely done, friends. You all passed your shapes quiz. Way to go. <laughs> nicely done. Okay, now we're gonna do a little bit more sorting here. So I'll show you some everyday items and we'll add it to our chart here. Okay. What shape is this? It's like a little puzzle piece. What's the outline of that shape? Do you see it on our board here or on our uh, chart? Yes, if you said square, you are absolutely correct. A square is a quadrilateral. So I'm gonna add it to our quadrilateral. Four sides, four vertices, and they're all the same. Next one. What is this shape? Do you see it on our chart or on the board? Yes, I heard a friend yell out, oval. You are absolutely correct. So we'll add it to our oval. All right, what shape is this? It's like a wheel of a bike. Yes, it is a circle. Do you see any other shapes inside? Nice, I'm hearing some friends say that they see some triangles inside. And there's also some other circles right here in the center. A bike wheel is a circle. Really, if a bike wheel was any other shape than a circle, it would be a pretty difficult bike to ride, I think. <laughs> All right. What shape is this? It's a beautiful ruby ring. <laughs> oh, so I heard some friends say that that diamond on the top is a rhombus. Do you see any other shapes inside this diamond or in the ring in general? Yes, I'm hearing some friends say there is a square in the center of the rhombus. What else do you see? I heard a friend say that the ring is a circle. You're absolutely correct. 
Does anybody else see any other shapes? Maybe one that we just did in our shapes quiz. Wow, I heard a friend say that they can see some trapezoids in this diamond as well. Nicely done, friends. All right, next is what shape is this yummy piece of candy? Yes, if you said oval, you are absolutely correct. Oval, so it can go side to side, up and down. And then maybe in those stripes, you can recognize some like rectangles that are in that design as well. Okay, let's do a couple more. What is this shape here? These really super cool glasses. Nicely done. I heard a friend say that those lenses or frames there are shaped like a hexagon. A hexagon has six sides. All right, what about this hanger? Nicely done. I heard a friend say the hanger is the shape of a triangle. And then you've got that like sort of hook at the top too. The hook kind of makes me think of like a question mark. But we're going to add it to a triangle. A triangle has three sides. All right. What about this pillow? What shape do you think a pillow is mostly like? Yes, I heard a friend say it's probably closest to a rectangle. Two long sides, two short sides, and it is a quadrilateral. Four sides, four vertices. All right, this is the one that I use for us to help us remember what shape is this? Yeah, a hexagon, nicely done. A ha ha. Hexagon is the same as the honeycombs here. And you see how they perfectly interlock like that as well. I love that shape. Hexagon is one of my favorite shapes. Um, what else? Let's see. Ooh, this delicious tortilla chip. What shape is that? Yes, it's a triangle. A triangle has three sides. Up the mountain, down the back, and back again we slide. All right, what shape is a dollar bill? Yes, if you said a rectangle, you are absolutely correct. A rectangle is a quadrilateral, four sides, four vertices. Two sides are long, two sides are short. What about a slice of delicious pizza? Yes, a pizza slice would be a triangle. Do you see any other shapes on the uh, pizza slice here? Yeah, I noticed too that the pepperonis on it look like circles. So those are the shapes of a circle. You could even say that the crust maybe would be a 3D shape. That's called a cylinder. We'll talk more about that tomorrow. But I'm gonna add our pizza slice to our triangle. Okay, what about This yummy cheesy cracker. Yes, you nailed it. It's definitely a square. A square is a quadrilateral. Do you see another shape? Nice, I can't get anything past you friends. It has a little circle there in the center. Quadrilateral, but it does have that small circle. And then what about this? window here. What shape would that be? Yes, nicely done. It is a square. And then you can see in it that it's also got four smaller squares as well. I see lots of angles, right angles here that form when the sides meet. I also see perfect examples of parallel lines as well. So square is a quadrilateral, four sides. What shape is a kite? This is a very beautiful kite. 
Yes, it would be a rhombus. Do you see any other shapes in there as well? Yes, I heard some friends shout out triangles. Do you see the triangles in the shape on the kite? Yeah, and the pattern there as well. And I even noticed that there's small little triangles in those cute little bows in the string of the kite as well. But we will add it to the rhombus because the shape is mostly a rhombus. All right, this is a um, screw. And what shape is on the top of a screw? Yes, nice job, it's a hexagon. Do you see any other shapes? Oh, I heard a friend say that that pointy tip is kind of like a triangle. You're definitely right. What other shapes do you see? Oh, I heard a friend say that they noticed the rectangles on there as well. And then the shape of the um, screw is also like a 3D shape, which would be a cylinder as well. Amazing job, friends. So we're going to add it to hexagon because it is mostly that hexagon shape there at the top. All right, let's do one more. What is this crossing sign here? Yes, nicely done. This would be, um, I don't know, I think you could argue that this could be a rhombus or a square, right? If you put it on its side like this, it definitely looks like a square. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it on square here for the quadrilateral. So I wanted to take a second for, um, to talk to you about some different ways that you can practice recognizing shapes at home. So something that you can do to practice your shapes is using Play-Doh or like clay in order to create your own 2D or 3D shapes. You could also practice drawing your shapes in so many different ways. On paper with pencil, you could draw it with your finger in shaving cream or in sand or salt. Um, you could also use a stick to draw shapes in the dirt. You could use sidewalk chalk to draw shapes outside of your home. You could also create shapes using toothpicks and marshmallows. I love to build with toothpicks and marshmallows. Can you make a 2D shape or a 3D shape? You can also um, practice by making shapes with your body, just like we've been doing with our shape yoga. I also encourage my friends to try to go on a walk around your house or um, also going on a walk outside and see what kind of shapes can you find in your environment. Because I bet as soon as you start looking for shapes, you'll have a hard time not seeing shapes literally everywhere. They are all around us every day. You did such an amazing job today, friends. Thank you for all of your hard work. I'll see you later. Bye. Teaching in Room 9 is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.